Welcome to Bioremediation and Dr. Mickey. Today we need to talk about the bioremediation of metals, maybe metal ions or maybe the heavy metals as well. Also we need to talk about the physical and chemical remediation of metal contaminated sites. These sites as soils, sediments and also the aquatic systems. So let's start the bioremediation of metals and its problems after the break. Welcome back. Actually, the metal pollution, this is the big problem, worldwide problem. Not only one country is suffering from this uh, problem, but every country actually suffering from the uh, metal pollution. So, industrial area including the, a lot of the metal pollution. Even if you want to, for example, uh, rent a house, you have to avoid the industrial area. Because this area usually contaminated with high level of the metal ions located in that area, for example. In addition, it has been estimated that approximately 37% of sites in U.S. contaminated with organic pollutants, such as the pesticides, are additionally polluted with the metals. So the bioremediation of contaminated sites has focused on the removal of these organic compounds due to their toxic natures and also the presence of metal in organic contaminated sites often complicates and limits the bioremediation process. Such metals including the highly toxic cations of the mercuric and lead but many other metals are also of concern including arsenic, boron, cadmium, chromium, copper, nickel, manganese, selenium, silver, uh, tin, and also zinc as well. So actually the metal problems are the, the metals cannot degrade it, but the metal can be only the precipitated or be immobilized. And also the high concentration of the metal may be fail the bioremediation process. So the metal pollution problems arise when the human activity either disrupts the normal biogeochemical cycles or concentrates the metals. For example, of such activities including mining and or refinement. Also including the nuclear processing and the industrial manufacture of a variety of products including the batteries, metal alloys, electrical components, paints, preservatives and also some insecticides. If you look at this table it shows the typical background levels of heavy metals in soil and also aquatic environments. You can find the metal, this is the, the, uh, the first column and the middle column, this is the concentration of the metal uh, within the aquatic system and also the another column, this is the soil concentration of the typical uh, concentration of the metal inside the soil. So, for example, you can find the zinc, you can find the, the normal concentration of the zinc inside in the aquatic uh, system around 19.6 while the zinc concentration in the soil more higher this is the 496 uh, this is the normal uh, concentration while this table shows the typical metal concentration in the contaminated environments you can find for example the locations and the metal concentrations for example, the first location, this is the river in India, you can find the metal of the, uh, the zinc concentration around 233.41 microgram per liter and so on. So you can find a lot of the heavy metals in different places uh, contaminated with the uh, uh, heavy metals and so on. So due to the elevated metal concentrations in our environment have wide ranging the, uh, the impacts on the animal, plants and the microbial species as well. So all of these concentrations or metal concentrations in our environment, this is the producing a lot of the uh, problems and human risk 
even the animal and the plants as well. For example, the human exposure to the variety of metal causes symptoms such as hypophosphatemia. Hypo means lower. Phosphate, phosphate, this is the phosphate, P, and emia means blood. So these symptoms or this disease called hypophosphatemia means lowering the phosphate in our blood. This is the called hypophosphatemia. Also including the other uh, diseases like the heart diseases, liver damage, cancer, neurological disorders also, this is uh, affecting also the nervous system, also the central nervous system damage as well. Also exposure to the metals is the cause of most morphological and uh, mutational changes observed in plants as well. You can find in this picture, you can find the brown color, this means this is drying the edge of the leaves. This including is a shortening of roots, leaf scorch, chlorosis, the green color change to yellow, this is called chlorosis, and also the nutrient the deficiencies and increase the insect attack as well. So a lot of the problems also will be uh, produced due to the high concentration of the contaminated sites with the heavy metals. So the first uh, uh, picture of this plant, this is drying of the uh, uh, leaves. This is the called necrosis. This is one of the diseases or plant disease. Even the microbial growth also is often the uh, uh, slowed or maybe completely inhibited in the presence of the amount of some metals. Some plants and the microbial species have a high tolerance for the metals. Some plant species of the agros, minorcia and also silane. All of these plants are known for their tolerance to the heavy metals. In the research we have a study on the leaves of some plants like the monorchia. This is the were able to accumulate on an average of the around uh, 2900 milligram zinc per kg and also the silane also is the plant one of the other hand this is also accumulated up to the uh, around 1000 milligram lead uh, per kg so this plants able to remove a lot of the heavy metals the contaminated sites also the same the microorganisms have developed a variety also of a strategy to deal with the high metal concentrations in our environment so also we have a lot of the microorganisms also as the same as plants able to tolerate uh, the uh, high concentration of the heavy metals. This include the uh, binding of the metals of the cell surface uh, or the cell wall, translocations of the metal into the cell and metal transformation including the precipitation and volatilization as well all of these are able the microorganisms to such a strategies now let's move to the physical and the chemical remediation of metal contaminated sites actually we have many traditional physical chemical approaches that have been used to remediate the metal contaminated sites these sites may be soil or maybe the sediments and also the aquatic systems. So let's start with the soil to remove the heavy metals from these contaminated sites. We have traditional metal remediation technologies have been typically involved in the physical removal by the excavation. We mentioned before you need to remove all the contaminated soil to another place, maybe treatment place or the other uh, working place for such contaminated soil. And also transport of the contaminated sites to the hazardous waste landfills. So in such a case you need to remove and also transport. That means we will be increasing the cost for the excavation and also the transport 
and also uh, the, also will be shrinking the available landfill space make alternative you know options uh, attractive so we have two alternative strategies for the remediation of metal contaminated sites are immobilization and the metal removal by soil washing or pump and treat both of these strategies use or depend on the pH to influence the metal solubility so the soil immobilization means attachment of the heavy metal onto the the solid surface like this one in such a case you can remove the heavy metals once immobilized this immobilization may be immobilized onto the soil surface for example so for immobilization the metal solubility in soil generally decreased with increasing the pH so that means if you want to precipitate the metal you need to increase the pH Thus, the pH can be used to immobilize the metal, effectively making them less toxic and preventing their movement into the uncontaminated areas. Liming, for example, this is the chemical substance, can be used to increase soil pH. Increase soil pH means you can precipitate or immobilize the uh, metals uh, uh, onto the soil particles. So you can decontaminate the heavy metals from the soil using the immobilization. Also you can doing the metal removal. Can be also achieved by in situ or ex situ soil washing, which is used primarily for the surface soil contamination or by palm and tree technology, which is used at the sites with deep soil or aquifer contamination so removal by soil washing or pump and treat is often the difficult and time consuming this is the one of the so, or some of the limitations for the uh, soil washing because soils and sediments sorb metals so strongly because of the interactions with the colloids such as humics and the negatively charged of the clays so difficult due to the some charge maybe the soil may be a, a negative charge and also what is the uh, charge of the uh, for example the metal may be also uh, negative so cannot immobilize or precipitate due to the similar charge between the soil and also the heavy metal so some colloids the such as uh, humics humics are the chemical substance with high molecular weight like the functional groups like uh, hydroxyl uh, carbonyl uh, you know so any uh, chemical groups this is the belongs to the humic substance we have humic substance we have non humic substance non humic substance like the maybe carbohydrates proteins enzymes but humic substance this is only functional groups so soil washing with the acidic solutions is one way to facilitate the metal removal under acidic conditions Sorbid metals are released and the increase in hydrogen ions causing the competition for the available phosphate and results in formation of the phosphoric acid. For this reason, this is the uh, acidic soil due to the formation of the phosphoric acid. Here this figure shows the remediation strategies for the soil and sediments we have the physical and chemical contaminated sites if you this is the both you can using the metal removal or metal immobilization for metal removal you can metal solubilization for example acid leaching and decaliation as well then replacement and reclaimed soil after that the metal containing the effluent so you can remove the uh, the uh, the metal 
If you are using a metal immobilization means metal precipitation using phosphate or carbonate or, or some minerals like sulfidic minerals after that monitor the status of the soluble metals then you can check the metal uh, uh, soluble or not. Another figure shows the remediation strategy or the, for the soil and sediment also using the biological strategies. Also, the contaminated soil may be uh, remove the metal or may immobilized, remove the metal using the metal uh, uh, oxidation and the biological leaching, as for example, acid production, chelation, surfactants, emulsifier, and other uh, byproducts by the microorganism, and finally, the metal containing in the effluents. If you are using biological metal immobilization like bacterial binding, for example, you can use EPS, this is the extra polymeric uh, substance, or maybe phosphate production, metal reduction, and so on. All this one can uh, be done by the microorganism or the plant if you are using the plant. After that, you can monitor the, the soluble metal status, so easily to remove the uh, metal from the contaminated sites using the biological metal immobilization. So also the metal may be also removed from the sediments. The actual removal of the sediments involves the dredging because the sediments, there is no oxygen enough in the sediments in such a case you have to use the anaerobic microorganism for bioremediation process this can pose the serious problems since it dredging the uh, including the uh, excavation of the sediments from benthic anaerobic conditions to more atmospheric oxidizing conditions so this can result in increasing the solubilization of metals with increased bioavailability as well and the potential toxicity and increased the risk of the contaminated spreading. So decontamination of the metal from the sediments has the many problems. Also we can remove the metal from the aquatic system water Metal removal from the surface water or groundwater or even the wastewater streams is more straightforward than uh, that from the soil or even from the, uh, the sediments. Very easy and maybe more than 90% successful bioremediation of the heavy metals from aquatic systems will be uh, uh, very simple and easily to manage. Typically, removal is achieved by the concentration of the metal within the waste stream using the flocculation or complexation and also maybe you can use precipitation. For example, you can use the chemical substance called lime or caustic soda will cause the precipitation and the flocculation of the metals as hydroxides. Also, we can use the ion exchange, reverse osmotic, and also electrochemical recovery of the metals can be used for the metal removal as well. So, as mentioned, the problem of the heavy metal is the, uh, the concentration of the metal. Also, we cannot degrade the metal. We can only immobilize the metal or may solubilize the metal or maybe we can precipitate the metal using a different technology. In such case, we can remove the or reduce the metal from the contaminated sites. So this is the uh, end of this video today and I hope you got the uh, benefit and please don't forget to share, like and subscribe and activate the bell to reach all of my new videos. Thank you, good luck and bye bye.